Blender has the ability to generate some very nice procedural textures. Procedural textures use mathematical formulas to generate textures. And what's nice is that these mathematical textures don't require external images to be loaded. By using other nodes that Blender provides, we can manipulate the textures to achieve some impressive effects. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use a texture to make objects look chipped. And in case you only want the paint to be chipped, I'll show you how to do that too. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.81. We'll start by switching to the shading workspace. Currently, we have a principled shader. Add a noise texture by pressing Shift A and select Texture, and then Noise Texture. Now add a displacement node. In the vector menu, you'll see displacement and vector displacement. Select displacement. Now connect the noise texture's factor output to the height input. Then connect the displacement output to the displacement input. This is a basic noise texture setup. Next, we can make these objects look chipped by adding just one more node. So add a math node and drop it on the connection coming out of the Noise Texture node. Then change the math type to Maximum. Now there are flat areas and textured areas. That's because the output of the Maximum node will either equal the Noise Texture or this value, whichever is larger. So this lets us clip the Noise Texture to produce a flat surface. To increase the flat surface area, increase this value. I'm going to set it to 0.6. You'll notice that the textured areas are raised, which in some cases may be what you want. But for a chipped look, we want them to be indented. To indent them, simply change the scale value to a negative value. I also want the chips to be extra deep, and so I'll set this value to minus 5. The chips look too smooth, so I'll increase the detail to 10 to give it a rougher look. This produces a nice chipped effect. This is our rendered image. Now it would be nice if we could have one shader for the smooth surface and another shader for the chipped areas. To do that, add a mix shader and drop it on the output of the principled shader. Then select the principled shader, press Shift D to duplicate and drag it to the side. Connect it to the bottom mix shader input. I'm going to change the base color to white, and I'll also increase the roughness. Now we need a way to control the mix shader's factor input. So select the maximum node, press Shift D to duplicate, and drag it up here. Now change the math type to greater than. Then connect the noise texture factor output to the top input. Then connect the output to the factor input. Since we duplicated the node, these values should match, which is what we want. Now the smooth area is using the red shader, and the chipped areas are using the white shader. That's because the greater than node only outputs a 1 or a 0. So if the noise texture is greater than 0.6, then it outputs a 1, which selects the white shader. Otherwise, it outputs a 0, which selects the red shader. Now let's take a close look at the chips. You'll notice that the paint doesn't have any thickness. To give it some thickness, just increase this value. I'll set it to 0.61. This looks good. This is our rendered image. Now let's say that you only want the paint to be chipped and not the objects. We can do this by adding just one more node. So select the greater than node, press Shift D to duplicate, and drop it on the input to the displacement node. Then change the math type to minimum. These two values should be the same, which is 0.61. Now only the paint is chipped. The output of the minimum node is either this input or this value, whichever is smaller. The effect of these two nodes together is that they clip the noise texture below 0.6 and above 0.61, creating the smooth areas. In between these two values, the noise texture is not clipped, and so we get a nice grainy paint edge. This is our rendered image. Well, that concludes this video. 
Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.